Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In this video, we're going to introduce the UMTS architecture. We're going to start by discussing the mobile and the subscriber identity module. We're then going to look at the UMTS radio access network. We'll move on into the core network, specifically looking at how we support voice in the circuit switch core and how we support data in the packet switch core. So here's a very simplified view of the key functions you'll find in a UMTS network. So let's start with the user equipment, the mobile. So the mobile in UMTS is called the user equipment or the UE, unlike GSM where it's called the mobile station. We'll also hear the term multi-RAT, multi-radio access technology. And this is because most UMTS devices support multiple technologies. For example, they can connect to UMTS, but they can also connect to GSM GPRS or the GRAN. The mobile is split into two parts. The first is the mobile equipment. This is all the hardware, so it includes the radio, the processors, the screen and camera, etc. The other part is known as a subscriber identity module. Specifically in UMTS, it's called the USIM, Universal Subscriber Identity Module. This includes subscription information as well as security information, but it can also include address books, etc. Now the phone is going to have to connect to the radio access network. Now it does this using the air interface. The air interface is known as the UU interface in UMTS. The U, the big U, is to do with user, the small U, UMTS. Now the radio access network in UMTS is called the UTRAN, the Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. And that consists of node Bs and R and Cs. The node Bs being the base stations, the R and Cs being the radio network controllers, the controlling function. Now these are connected using the IUB interface. If we have a look at the R and C and the node B in a little bit more detail, the R and C will look after lots of node Bs. So the mobile, when it comes onto the system, it's actually wanting to talk to the RNC, not the node B. The node B is more of a relay, but it handles the air interface. So we've looked at the radio access network, we've looked at the phone, we're now going to go and look at the core network. And in UMTS there are two splits, effectively, to do with the core network. We've got the circuit switch side and the packet switch side. So let's go and have a look at the circuit switch core network. And as you can see from the diagram, we're going to connect from the radio access network using the IUCS, so the interface for UMTS CS circuit switched. And we're going to go up to a switch, the switch being the MSC or mobile switching center. In the core network to do with circuit switch, we have MSCs, mobile switching centers. These are all about making and receiving calls, managing text messaging, but also they keep information about where the mobile is currently located. There is also a gateway MSC, and the gateway MSC is all about interconnecting to other service providers. So this might be fixed operators, mobile operators, etc. We also have in the core network a HLR, a home location register. So this is a store of all the subscribers that belong to that particular service provider. From the circuit switch side, we're going to use the interface called the C interface to allow the HLR and the circuit switch core, specifically around the MSC, to connect. So the HLR will have connections to the different MSCs. The idea is as you switch on, you're going to find yourself on one of these MSCs and we're going to download your profile. And it's actually specifically going to go down to the VLR or the visitor location register. If I'm on one MSC, my information will be there. You're on a different MSC, your information will be downloaded there. Now, the key difference between a HLR and a VLR is the HLR is a store of all the subscribers on that service provider. A visitor location register is a store of all the subscribers who are visiting that location, whether they are from this service provider or they have roamed into this service provider. So we've looked at the circuit switch side. Let's go and have a look at the packet switch side. 
So we're going to support the data aspects. Specifically, we're going to go across the RUPS, so the Interface for UMTIS PS Packet Switched. So this is how the radio access network connects to the packet switch core. We also have interfaces known as the GN. A lot of the interfaces in the packet switch side are called G for, historically, GPRS. So N, GPRS connections, N for node. So it's going between different GPRS support nodes. Specifically, we've got two types. We can see there's an SGSN and a GGSN, a serving GPRS support node and a gateway GPRS support node. And the GN allows the connectivity of those. We also can see on the diagram a GS interface. I always remember S for switch, so it goes between the SGSN and an MSC. This is used for some combined procedures to try and reduce signaling on the air interface. If we have a look at the SGSN and GGSN in a little bit more detail. So the SGSN is very much where you're going to establish your packet switch connection. It's going to manage the subscribers. It's going to connect you to the GGSN, to the gateway GPRO support nodes. It's also going to keep a track of where the mobile is currently located. The GGSN, the gateway GPRS support node, is all about the connecting to the external network. So this is very much to do with an intranet, internet type connections. It's also an anchor point. So the idea is you're anchored on this GGSN, but you can move to different SGSNs as part of mobility. The other thing to point out is we also have a connectivity towards the HLR. So like we had the C interface on the circuit switch side, we've got the GR. Yeah, G again for GPRS, R I always remember, register, it's a HLR, it's a register. So we have this GR interface, downloading your profile information. So as you connect, you will connect onto one SGSN, and we will download your profile information to that SGSN. Obviously different users on different SGSNs, the HLR will be downloading the profile to the right SGSN for that particular subscriber. So that concludes a look at all the key functions in the UMTS architecture. In summary, we've identified there's a mobile, and the mobile is termed the UE, or user equipment. And it's made up of two parts, the mobile equipment, the hardware, and the SIM card, or the USIM, the Universal Subscriber Identity Module. We've also identified there's a radio access network in UMTS called the UTRAN, the Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. And that's made up of the controllers, the RNCs, radio network controllers, and the base stations, the node Bs. In addition, we go off towards the core network, two core networks, circuit switched and packet switched. In the circuit switch core, we have switching, MSCs, mobile switching centers, but we also go off towards the gateway MSCs as we go out to the other service providers, fixed or mobile. We identified databases, the HLR, the home location register, storing your profile, downloading it to the MSC, or specifically the VLR, the visitor location register. And in the packet switch side, we've identified that we have SGSNs and GGSNs, serving and gateway GPRO support nodes. And we also have a connectivity to the HLR to download profile to the SGSN, which remember is going to track your mobility. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.